Hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Sunday School Online. Are you ready to worship? Stand up! It's always a good time to praise our good God. Let's start with a song. Today we're discovering that God is good no matter what. Every time you hear the words, God is good, pump your fist in the air and shout, no matter what. Let's try it together. God is good no matter what. Awesome job. When we say God is good no matter what, we don't mean that God's just okay. God's goodness is different from how you describe your, how your breakfast tasted or how good you did on a spelling test. God's goodness is huge. It's what we hold on to when times get tough. God is good, no matter what. Let's meet our new Bible memory buddy. It's Mac, the rhino. How much do you know about rhinos? Let's find out with a this or that challenge. You'll hear two fun facts about rhinos. It's up to you to decide which one is true, this fact or that fact. What does the word rhinoceros mean? Is it thick skin or nose horn? Drum roll, please. 
Rhinoceros means nose horn. Pretty interesting. Let's learn more about our new friend, Mac the Rhino. Hello there. My name is Mac, and I'm a rhinoceros. The word rhinoceros means nose horn. I'm pretty sure you can guess how I got that name. <laughs> I live on the continent of Africa. It's hot where I live. So during the day, I usually hang out in the shade. Need to cool off and protect your skin? How about a good stretch in a mud puddle? For me, mud is a bug repellent and sunscreen all rolled into one. Oh, uh, that's better. Hunting rhinos is against the law, but some people think rhino horns make good medicine. They don't. My horn is made of the same stuff as your fingernails, and chewing your fingernails never cured anything. Some people kill a rhino just to get its horns. Because hunters want our horns, we rhinos are what you called critically endangered. That means there's not a lot of us left in the wild. We don't really have a good way to protect ourselves, and that's not fair. I bet you know how it feels when things aren't fair. And someone in the Bible probably knew that feeling too. There was a fellow named Joseph in the Bible who had a beautiful coat. And that coat helped him find out that God is good, no matter what. It also helped him get into some trouble along the way. So I was thinking, Maybe I should switch up what I wear too. Maybe. Or perhaps. Or this would be a new look. <sighs> Never mind. I'll think I'll just stick with what I've got. This color looks good with my horn. You know, life isn't always fair, but God is always good. In the Bible, Book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is good no matter what. He'll help you out when you need it. He's a helper when you get in trouble for something you didn't do. God will help you when it feels like your world has turned upside down. God's goodness is for you, no matter what. Well, I've got to run. But I'll be back to tell you some more about myself and my tribe. For now, this is Mac, over and out. The Bible is God's true story of love. It's one big book that's filled with a bunch of little books. Our Bible memory verse is from Nahum 1-7. Let's say the verse together. I'll say a line and then you repeat after me. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. Awesome. Can we try that together? The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. Nice job. So in case you didn't know, a refuge is a safe place. Like when it's raining during a basketball game, you find refuge in the dugout. Or when it's really cold outside, you find refuge in a warm house. God is our refuge. He's our go-to friend when trouble comes. God is good, no matter what. So we don't need to worry about anything. Let's sing about that. <laughs>
Together. It's packed with amazing stories that tell us about God and his plan to get rid of the sin that's messed up the perfect world he's created. God's plan included a special family, the Israelites. Abraham was the great granddad to this family. He had a son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. And one of those sons is the star of our story today. His name was Joseph. Imagine having 11 brothers and some sisters too. That was Joseph's family. You might be thinking that it's hard enough to have one or two siblings. Some of you may not even have siblings, but you do have other cousins or other kids around in your family. I'm curious. What's the hardest part about having other kids in your family? I know for me, it's sometimes hard to share really cool things with my brothers. Things aren't always fair in families. Sometimes you have to clean up messes you didn't make, or you have to wait to eat dinner until your brother's done with soccer practice, or your parents miss seeing your ballet recital because your little sister had a meltdown in the audience. It's just not fair. Well, there are two sides to every story. So let's take a look at this story from Joseph's point of view and his brother's point of view. Let's read the first part of the story together. It's found in Genesis 37. Genesis 37-2. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. He brought their father a bad report about them. So let's start with the brothers. They're mad because Joseph tattled on them. It's not fair when someone blabs about you behind your back. Okay. Now let's see it from Joseph's point of view. Joseph didn't do anything wrong. It's not his fault his brothers were doing bad things. He just calls it like it is. It's not fair that the brothers were mad at Joseph for telling the truth. Hmm. Let's find out what happens next. Genesis 37, three through four says, Now Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And so he made him an ornate robe for him. 
When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Hmm. Okay, back to the brothers. They hated Joseph because their dad gave him special treatment. I mean, it's not fair that Joseph got a beautiful coat and they didn't. It's not fair that Joseph, Joseph's brothers were mad at him for something he didn't do. Hmm. Genesis 37 verses 5 through 11 say, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him so much more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. There, we were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around it to mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of this dream of what he said he had had. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time, the sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. And when he told this to his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come down and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Those were some unusual dreams. Back in Bible times, though, dreams were a big deal. People thought that dreams were one way that gods talked to people. Joseph's family believed in the one true God, so these dreams weren't happening just because Joseph ate broccoli before he went to bed. God could actually be up to something. Jacob, the dad, wondered about these dreams. He knew God well enough to know that he works in surprising ways. God is good, no matter what. God had been good to his family so far, so maybe Jacob wondered about God's plan for the future. Okay. So I'm going to summarize the next part. Joe's brothers were out of town watching family sheep. They saw little Joe bro coming and they wanted to kill him. Not tease him, not give him a wedgie, kill him. They hated him that much. They came up with a plan to take his special coat, dip it in some animal blood and make it seem like he had been eaten by a wild animal. Their dad would be sad, sure, but at least they wouldn't be in trouble. Reuben, the oldest brother, didn't like the idea. He wanted to throw Joseph in an empty well instead, and then secretly get, take home Joseph later without anyone else knowing. Genesis 37 verses 23 through 28 say, So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the beautiful robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the well. The well was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat their meal. They looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take him down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay a hand on him. After all, he's our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the well and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took him to Egypt. Okay. Let's think about this from the brother's side of the story. They're pretty terrible, but at least they didn't hurt Joseph. He was so annoying, but at least he'd be out of their hair. He wasn't their problem anymore. <sighs> this isn't such a good story. It's filled with hatred and jealousy and unfair situations. And yet God was still at work in this family. He had good plans for his people and for the world. Joseph ending up in Egypt would ultimately be a good thing. 
but it sure didn't feel like it then. I wish I could teleport back to that well and tell Joseph, God is good, no matter what. He'd probably need to hear that message. Maybe you do too. Life isn't always fair. People misunderstand us and annoy us and hurt us when we don't deserve it. But friends, God is good, no matter what. He was with Joseph. He was with even Joseph's brothers. And he's with you and me too. God is our good refuge. We can go to him for help when we need it the most. Let's pray and ask for his help right now. God, you are so good. Thanks for being a strong refuge when trouble comes. No matter what my friends have gone through or what I'm going through, thank you that you love them and that you are good. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my friends, that's all for this week, but our story is far from over. Join us next week to find out what happens to Joseph and his brothers. You are not going to want to miss it. But until then, have a great week. And remember that God is good, no matter what. Bye, everyone. Want to get connected with Faith Lutheran Church? Click on the link in our bio. It'll give you more information about our Sunday school programs, our Spark program on Wednesday nights, and our Faith Family Fun events. We want to get to know you and connect with you, so join us.